<laughs> anyway, I'd like to sing a little song for you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I want to tell you this story. A buddy of mine told me this story today. It's a brand new story, and it's so cute. You know, all the storm and, and the snow that we, we've had during the, the winter season, well, especially here in New York, it's just been horrible. And, uh, well, up in Peaksville, it, it was worse. I mean, like we had six, eight inches here, 18, 20 inches up there. And there's a little house on the top of a hill, high hill, and an 80-year-old couple live in this house, and they're just snowed in. And the people below in the valley were so worried about this old couple, 80 years old, a man and a woman. And, and, and every day, the people in the village below would run out and take a look up at that house up on the mountain, and they'd see smoke coming through the chimney, and they were sure the old couple were okay. Every day, they ran out, smoke coming through the chimney, okay. Well, one day, they went out, and there was no smoke coming through the chimney. Oh, dear me. This poor couple surely had frozen to death, they thought. And they called the Red Cross immediately. And the salvation team came out, and they come out with the bulldozer, and they tore a road up that mountainside through the snow. They got up to the house, which was practically under the snow, and they dug it away, and they took axes and knocked down the icicles. And then two huge men with big cleat shoes walked up to that door and booted it in. They got inside, and here's this old 80-year-old couple in each other's arms, just shivering from the cold. And the man said to them, we're from the Red Cross. And the old man said, but we already gave. <laughs> Just picture him, you know, just a little fella, you know. Oh, I gotta tell you, speaking of little fellas, my favorite, favorite all-time little man story, I used to tell in the 5100 Club years ago in Chicago, and my favorite story about a little man, and we're uh, talking about a shortage of this and a shortage of that. Years ago, there was a terrible shortage of cigarettes, some of you m must remember, and uh, during this shortage, a store in town advertised that all cigarettes would be sold at eight cents a package on the following Wednesday. Well, you can imagine the crowd in front of that store on that Wednesday morning. It was a block long. And in the line is my favorite hero, the diminutive man. You ever watch little people in a line, supermarket or anywhere? Keep an eye on the little people. I call them oozers. They keep sneaking in a line like this. <laughs> and they give you that little apologetic smile, you know? And they keep sneaking in. Well, this little man kept oozing in the line a block long, and he finally oozed his way up to the head of the line, but unfortunately for him, in front of a huge truck driver type, big fella, who gave our little hero a nudge behind the lap. <laughs> He says, get back to the end of the line, you little runt. You come up here again, I'll push your teeth in. Little man, quite frightened and dejected, walked to the end of the line, which is now a block and three quarters. <laughs> he stood there for a moment, gave the situation a bit of reflection, then began his pilgrimage again. <laughs> and he oozed, and he oozed, and he oozed, and finally got back to the head of the line in front of the same man. <coughs> this time, picked up our little hero, shook him real good, and gave him a slap across the face and knocked him into the middle of the street. And about this time, a policeman came along, picked the little fellow up and brushed him off, and he said, well, now, little man, what's going on here? Little man said, what's going on? If that stinker should hit me again, I wouldn't open up the store. <laughs> Only to fatigue, dear, from this moment on. From this happy day, no more blue songs. Only hoop de doo songs from this moment on. I've got the skin I love to touch. You got the charms I need so much. You got the arms to hold me tight. Got the sweet lips to kiss me tonight. From this moment on.
Danny, Danny, Danny Boyd, what can I say? You were sensational tonight. You were great. Well, thank you, boss. How about a raise? You weren't that great. <laughs> hey, Danny, well, the, the, the captain says there's a guy out front wants you to join him for a drink. Says he's important. Oh, child, I can't tonight. I want to go home and work on that new routine. Beg off for me, will you? Well, sure. The only thing is the guy says he's an old friend from Chicago. Old friend? I think he said his name was Riley. He, he remembers you from the 5100 Club. Eddie Riley? Yeah, I think that's what he said. He's sitting over at the corner table on the... Eddie, 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 Eddie Riley, the gangster? <laughs> Eddie Riley, I know. How come you should know such a tough character like that? Well, you work in a nightclub. People come in. What's it? What do I know what kind of a tough character? The man's a customer in a nightclub. He was a nice fella, too. He used to come in. Quite a sentimentalist. He'd request an Irish song. I'd sing it, and he'd cry like a baby. That makes him a sentimentalist? Oh, well, sure. A lot of people cry at Irish songs. At McNamara's band? <laughs> really? I'm Ribbon. Come on. I'll introduce you to him. No, no, I, I'd rather not. Just point him out to me and I'll wave. <laughs> what, are you afraid of him? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, suppose I say the wrong thing to me. Maybe he'd dislike me. So what if he dislikes you? So what? You know what they say about this guy? If, if he don't like you, the first thing you should do is learn how to swim with your feet in a bucket of cement. Come on. I don't know. Riley? Danny, Danny, boy, how are you, Danny? Boy, oh, what, are you, what are you doing in New York? Oh, we're in here for the convention. Sit down. Thank how you. are you, Danny, fine, boy? Fine, fine. This is uh, my boss, Mr. Helper. Well, it's nice to meet you, Mr. Helper. Likewise, Your Honor. <laughs> but these are business associates, sir. Oh, oh yeah. excuse me, uh, Cement uh, business. <laughs> I think they want me on the phone. Now, sit down. <laughs> I think you gave a great show, Danny. You know, I mean, you've got the kind of show that it's full of heartwarming, homey philosophy. Oh, thank you. You know, not just jokes. I dig that philosophy, Jazz. I'm always trying to improve my mind. Isn't that right, boy? You know, as a matter of fact, Danny, I, uh, I write down any deep thoughts that I have. Then I put them in poems that I write. I'm going to publish a book sometime, all those poems. Oh. Well, you see, that's why I appreciate an act like yours, you know, because, well, it's deep. That's not to say it's not also very funny. Very funny. <laughs> Dan, Danny's the greatest. He, he kills the people. Ah! <laughs> not, not kills the people like you do. <laughs> no, what I mean is it's, it's like an expression. When I say you, I, I, what I, when I, I wish I was dead. <laughs> no, I don't. What I mean? <laughs> what, what do you... He gets a little excited. What he means is he's glad you like my act, Mr. Wright. Well, Danny, what's not to like? I mean, you know, a show like yours, a man can bring a lady to your show and know she's never going to hear anything that offends her, even his mother. <laughs> thank you. No, 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 don't you thank me. It's you who should be thanked. You know, a nice guy like you, even though you're way up on top, you never hesitate. You do a benefit for anybody anytime. Listen, boys, someday somebody should do something for you, Thank too. Uh, I, I don't no, no, no. I don't. No, I mean, I know you've been lucky, successful, but you deserve it. However, Danny, you never know. It's a big life, long life, and maybe sometime, somewhere, you're going to find yourself your back against the wall. You're not going to know where to turn, and you're going to need a buddy. That's when you send for me. Well, thank, thank you, buddy. No. Hey, buddy, but listen, Danny. I wrote a poem once. I'd like you to hear it, you know? Listen, listen. When the whole world is full of woe and strife, when cares and heartaches fill your life, when you face each new day feeling cruddy, that's when a fellow needs a buddy. <laughs> Just beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I hope you like it. Very good. Yeah. Hey, isn't that Skippy Harris sitting back there? Where? Back oh. in the club. Yeah, yeah, that's him. I told you a thousand times, don't let him in the club when I'm working here, will you please? He must have... Like always copping my materials. He must have come in while I was in the office. Why don't you like this guy? Well, you know the reputation Milton Berle has for stealing jokes? Yeah. That's just oh. a gag, you know. This guy really does steal the jokes. Coming this way. <laughs> Hello, Danny boy. Hello, Danny boy. Hello, Danny boy. <laughs> I was standing in the back of the club there, and I uh, saw you looking my way. I figured you're talking about me because I uh, saw your nose light up. <laughs> Why do you have to take it 
take my material. Our material? Come on, Danny. You know that everybody steals. You grab a piece there, a piece there. Everybody grabs a chunk. You know the old saying? All takers, pal. No givers. Sir. Sir, sir. Yeah? You know, with a philosophy like that, you're gonna wind up without a friend in the world. Well, dig that peachy kumquat over there. <laughs> what philosophy? What, is he a preacher? Boy, have you got a wrong number? I think you're right, Shorty. With a puss like that, he ought to be a test pilot in a pickle factory. <laughs> I think it's this way, right? Sweet kid. You are wasting your time talking to that guy. Oh, forget about him. Well, Mr. Riley, I've got to go change my clothes. It was nice of you to come over. Yeah, Thank sure, you. Danny, but tell me, aren't you gonna do anything about it? Well, there's hardly anything I can do about it. You know, in our business, it's strictly an honor system. There's no way to protect your material but through honor. If a fellow latches on to a routine, it's his. Everybody else lays off. Everybody else except a guy like Skip Harris. But forget that. I'll uh, see you again sometime. Oh, Dan! Yeah. You remember what I said? You bring your troubles to me, and you watch your troubles burst like bubbles. <laughs> I have no troubles, Mr. Riley. Except Skippy Harris. Oh, forget Skippy Harris. Someday somebody will really teach him a lesson. You're like, maybe hand him his head. <laughs> you know, it would be interesting to see how he looked a head shorter. <laughs> you know, you're, you're a pretty funny fella yourself, Mr. Riley. <laughs> I mean, you're a regular killer. <laughs> Skippy Harris, don't you? Yeah, and I wish I didn't. Why do you ask? Well, he was in an accident. Hmm? Yeah. Listen to this. Comic hit and run victim. Nightclub comedian Skippy Harris narrowly escaped injury last night when he was struck a glancing blow by a hit and run driver. He was taken to Central Hospital for observation. Hmm? Yeah. Well, I have no particular love for the guy, but I'm sure glad he wasn't seriously hurt. I'll get it. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Kathy. Want some coffee? No, thanks, honey. No. Oh. Hi, Danny. Hi, right, Charlie. Did you see this in the morning paper about Skippy Harris? Yeah, Kathy just showed it to me. You, uh, you think it was a coincidence, huh? Coincidence? Yeah, I mean, the way it happened right after I said to Eddie Riley how nice it would be if someone handed Skippy his head. Oh, come on. Riley knew that was just a joke. Yeah, well, I thought it'd be nice if maybe we called Eddie Riley and told him it's just a joke. <laughs> Will you stop being silly? Eddie Riley has nothing to do with this. Besides, if you wanted to call him, what are we gonna call him? We don't know where he is. You look him up in a classified directory on the killers. <laughs> stop being such a wise guy, huh? It's just a coincidence. Yeah, you're yeah, right. It's, it's a coincidence because it probably wouldn't even have happened if, if he could have walked good on his right leg. Certainly not. I mean, he, he could have jumped quicker and the car wouldn't even have brushed him. What do you mean, if he could have walked good? Well, didn't you hear? What? Oh, when this fella accidentally knocked him off the subway platform, he was almost hit by the train. <laughs> <laughs> All in the same day? Mm-hmm. Say, uh, might not be a bad idea if we, uh, go to the hospital and visit Skippy and kind of... Maybe warn him? Why? I mean, you just said it was a coincidence. Yeah. Sure, it's just a coincidence, but wouldn't hurt to take him some flowers. Flowers? This is New York City. Where are we gonna get poison ivy? <laughs> Come on, let's go. Well, look who's here. The Lebanese joke salesman and the nightclub impressor. <laughs> right in, boys. What is Cer it? Certainly glad to see you. Yeah, I know how glad you are to see me, like General Custer was to see the Indians. I know all about that. We were glad to see you in one piece. We went over to the hospital and told us that you'd gone home. I'm glad to see you made it. You went to the hospital to see me? Remember the other night you you were ad-libbing with that fella, that rather distinguished-looking man at our table? Yeah, vaguely, I remember that. Yeah, why? Ever hear of Eddie Riley? Eddie Riley? Eddie Riley the Torpedo? Eddie Riley the Torpedo. I've heard of him. You, you uh, seen him, too? 
I have? Mm-hmm. The pickle push. <laughs> Fellow with the face for Halloween. You're kidding. I'd like to be kidding. I hope I'm kidding. Yeah. But uh, I have a feeling that Mr. Riley thinks that I would like your head broken a little. <laughs> and anything Danny wants, all he's got to do is ask. Skippy, sit down a second, will you? This is serious. It could be nothing. But these accidents, yeah. two in a row, happen to you just like that. I mean, maybe it's just a coincidence. But it, let's not take chances, huh? Maybe it wouldn't hurt if you laid low for a while, maybe maybe left town for a few days till I can find Riley and tell him that I like your head the way it is, soft and pointed. <laughs> you really think I ought to leave town for a little while, huh? It's better than leaving it forever. <laughs> I don't know why you're doing this for me. After all the trouble I've given to you. Well, let's say maybe it's because I used to be a Boy Scout. Or... Maybe I don't believe it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world like some people do. I know there's a lot more important things in life than comedy material. I certainly wouldn't want you hurt on my account. I can always get a new joke, but I can't get a new conscience. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. That's the funniest thing I ever heard you say. I wasn't trying to be funny. Oh, come on, Danny. Break it up, will you? You know a square that looks like he's cut out of an old Jimmy Cagney movie. And you're going to try to tell me that this is the real Eddie Riley? I tell you, it is the real Eddie Will Riley. Will you break it up, Danny? What do you think I am, a schnook or something? A couple of accidents happen. You see your big chance? Get rid of Skippy Harris. We get rid of the competition. Get out of there, will you? Sounds like a plot for a two-bit movie. What is that? You know something, Charlie? Yeah? I'm willing to believe the whole thing was just a coincidence. Me too. Come on. Yeah, it was just a coincidence. Look, let's stop worrying. Who's worrying? Believe me, if you hadn't brought the subject up, I, I wouldn't even have thought of it. I mean, all I want to do is relax and play cards. Me too, so let's forget about Skippy Harris. I'm not thinking about Skippy Harris. All I got my mind on right now is this card game. Okay, gin. <laughs> gin? I thought we were playing Pinochle. <laughs> playing gin. Come in. All right, you two. You're looking for trouble? You're gonna get it. What are you talking about? You know darn well what I'm talking about, Danny boy. The flower pot. What? Flower pot? The flower pot from six stories up. Missed my head that much. Could have killed me, you know. What? That's murder, you know, Danny. Enough of those phony accidents. Murder can send you to Sing Sing. They'll toast you like a bagel. That's it, pal. No more phony accidents. All right? Through. P.S. Blackout, Charlie. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> wait, a, wait a minute, Skip. Oh, Charlie. These are not phony accidents. I know it now. Holy smoke, will you please stay undercover till I can get to Eddie Riley, and you're gonna get hurt. Listen, if the real Eddie Riley ever finds out that you're trying to scare me with this phony, somebody's gonna get hurt, and pal, I hope your insurance is paid up. That's all I got. Skippy, I tell you, this is the real Eddie Riley, really. That's all Eddie Riley has to do, huh, is go around knocking off comics to protect your material. Get out of there. Well, Skippy, I tell you, please, do me a favor. Stay here. Stay in my house until I can find Riley and get you off the hook. You won't quit, huh? You won't quit. Well, let me tell you something, Mr. Humanitarian. Oh. I know a couple of pretty tough guys in this town. You see where your nose is? It'll be back there. So no more fooling skippy, around, right? Skippy, Skippy, so help me with telling you the truth. Oh, get I... out of there, Shorty. What do you want from me? Skip. Wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? I'm leaving. What, are you two guys going to try to stop me? Uh, no. No, if you want to go, go it's right ahead. Like you betcha. So long, Skippy. <laughs> I'm a mothball. How did you get in there? I crawled through the keyhole. Well, you just have to crawl out again. Mom! Hi, Daddy! Golly, isn't anybody home? Get Listen, you better stay here and make sure he doesn't get out. I'm gonna go with the superintendent. Okay. Come on, please, let me out of this thing. I can't let you out. You gotta stay there till we get the superintendent. What'd you say? I can't let you out. You gotta stay there till the superintendent gets here. Uh, I can't hear you through the door. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I said you gotta stay there till we get the superintendent. I can't let you out. If you can't, you can't. 
you little doll. But you can't oh! Hey, 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 hey. Uh, how'd you get out of the closet? Uh-huh. How'd you get out of the closet, huh? You heard it? I was in the closet? You're supposed to be a friend of mine? What do you got to say now? I don't have to hear anymore, kid. Would you mind stepping to my office a minute? It's right out here in the alley. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't do this to my friend. Just, 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 what did you say? I, I said you wouldn't want to do this to a nice fellow like you. What do you mean? Stepping outside in the oh, alley. Oh, hello, Danny. I heard you were looking for me. Gee, Mr. Riley. Yeah, I was looking for you. Mr. Mr. Riley, Riley. I'm glad to see Let you. Let go of my friend. You're bending the material. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm sorry, Miss Riley. You know, a guy makes mistakes sometimes, and uh, any friend of yours, it's okay with me. And, uh, gee, you're looking good, Miss Riley. Sorry. Uh, I'll say so long, and I'll give you regards to the boys. You do that. What are you, some kind of a nut? <laughs> You're Eddie Riley? Yes. And you're Skip Harris, right? You're looking a little pale. Boys, why don't you take him out for a little fresh air? Oh, oh but please, wait, 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 wait a minute, please. Uh, look, Mr. Riley, I was looking all over town for you, and I'm so glad you got my message. You see, uh, everything is straightened out with us. That's what I wanted to tell you. Oh, is that why you were looking for me? Yeah, we're the best of friends. That, that whole thing the other night at the table was just a practical joke. He's a... Oh, and the fellow who was giving you that massage? Yeah. That was a practical yeah. joke, too? Skip uh, brought him along just for laughs. <laughs> well, really. everything's okay, huh? Everything is really okay, Mr. Riley. Yeah, you show people you are an odd lot. <laughs> yeah, how are we, though? All right, boys, let him go. <clears throat> Say, Danny, look. Uh, tonight, I'd like you to give a real nice show. Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, you see... I'm bringing my mother. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Is it all right if I bring her backstage to say hello? Well, why, 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 sure. sure. Bye. I'll tell you something. I'd like to repay you with something. My friendship you have for the rest of your life. Well, thank you. That's great. But I have a piece of material here. Hmm? A pretty good piece of material. It's the only thing I've ever called my own. As a token of my friendship to you, really, to try to make up for all the little stinking things I've done, I'd like you to have it. It's a, it's a parody on Ben Hur. Hmm? It's called Ben Him. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and I want you to have it, really. You really want me to have it? Yes, I do. You know, Skippy, my father used to say that the greatest pleasure a man can have is to give of himself. And I'm not going to deny you that pleasure. I accept your gift. Thank you very much. Ben him, huh? Yes, yeah, funny. Y you sure this is funny? Funny? You should have heard the screams it got the night I stole it from Jerry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs>